you have waxing and waning fatigue levels. Maybe you feel good for a couple of days or even a week, and then your body starts to plummet again and you start feeling fatigue, joint aches, things like this. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at immune causes of fatigue. This is important when you have ongoing fatigue is to try to narrow down some of the things that could be causing your fatigue so you can really pinpoint in on what's going on and get a more precise treatment plan. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the immune causes of fatigue and hopefully give you a better understanding of what might be causing your fatigue. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, diagnosis, or symptom, make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's going on with your health. So if you like this kind of information on nutrition, lab tests, etc. Click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession. It should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at, let's look at some of the immune causes of fatigue. So in this video, we're going to look at some of the immune causes of fatigue. Specifically, we're going to look at five of the more common immune-related causes of fatigue. So of course, fatigue can have a lot of different causes, which makes it difficult to treat because most of the treatment is knowing what the actual cause is. So sometimes half the battle is just ruling things out. And in this video, we'll kind of go through some of the symptoms and presentations that may make you lean more towards an immune cause as a possibility versus other causes. So ruling things out and narrowing down the possibilities is obviously helpful in this case. And immune dysfunction and increased immune activity can definitely be one of those things that cause ongoing chronic fatigue issues. And it can present in a few different ways. And we'll discuss some of the more common diagnoses and also presentations. All right, so the main reason that immune system problems or dysfunction in your immune system can cause fatigue, you can think of it like the same way that you, when you get sick with a cold or flu, you get that kind of fatigue malaise feeling where you don't really feel like doing much. Maybe you just want to lay down. Maybe even you feel cold or chills. Those types of symptoms can wax and wane when you're sick with a cold or flu. But kind of underneath all that, you're always going to have like this low motivation, fatigue symptoms, and that's sort of built into the immune response. The chemicals that the immune system produces make you feel tired, and part of that is so that your body can rest and preserve the energy so it can do its job in fighting off those infectious agents, whether it's a virus, bacteria, or other microbe. So this type of fatigue for, related to immune system issues is more important to consider when your fatigue is waxing and waning. So you always kind of have some fatigue, but maybe it, it comes on in a burst and maybe lasts for three, four, five days, and then it goes away and then it comes back. And it could be intermittent in how often it comes. So it could be there for a couple of days, then it goes away for a week or two weeks, and then it comes again. Along with that, you may have body aches or joint aches. And that kind of goes along with the symptoms one would feel when they're sick with a cold or flu as well. But in these cases, you're not actually sick, obviously. You don't actually get a cold or flu, but you kind of feel like you're on the edge of maybe getting that kind of thing. So with that presentation in mind, here are some of the immune causes of fatigue. So obviously, chronic infections can be caused by viruses like Epstein-Barr or bacteria like mycoplasma pneumonia, or even something known as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Other pathogens like that, which produces Lyme disease, are also culprits for causing this intermittent waxing and waning fatigue. Autoimmune disease is a process where the immune system is hacking healthy cells and tissues, and this can also cause fatigue as it's related to producing those immune chemicals that can make us feel tired. And in this case, your immune system is kind of tricking the body in a sense because it's being overactive against tissues and fighting tissues that are self, and it really shouldn't be doing that. 
So these are things like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and other autoimmune diseases. Third one to talk about is inflammatory conditions. Inflammatory conditions can be lots of different things. Even the autoimmune things are considered inflammatory, but there's also some subclinical, meaning they're not autoimmune, but they're on the borderline where your immune system is definitely overactive and therefore you have inflammation going on in your body. We just don't know specifically what to call it or where it's coming from. So these could be things like IBS type symptoms with no actual autoimmune condition. So for irritable bowel disease like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, those are also considered autoimmune type of digestive disorders. But things like allergies, asthma, even post-viral syndrome can present in a way that there's obviously some inflammation there and you'll see it on some of the lab values and feel these off and on again fatigue. But as far as actual autoimmune disease, it's not there. So we'd say this is sort of an in-between subclinical autoimmune type of situation. A lot of people with mast cell activation syndrome would kind of fit in this category as well. A lot of allergies and those types of symptoms are in a way an overactivity of the immune system. It's just not so much where the immune cells are actually attacking the tissues of the body. Along the same lines, post-viral syndromes like that with Epstein-Barr and even COVID, you'll see this ongoing inflammation going on. Even after the virus has been defeated or out of the body, there's still a chronic ongoing inflammatory condition going on in the tissues of the lungs. Sometimes it will affect the heart and kidneys. And that's because the immune system is overactive. It's trying to resolve the viral issue and the damage that was created by the virus, but it's almost getting in its own way and creating more problems. The fourth thing that I wanted to talk about with regard to immune causes of fatigue are immunodeficiencies. There are certain immune deficiencies such as common variable immune deficiency and severe combined immunodeficiency. These types of things should be looked at when you do have chronic infections going on that aren't resolving in a reasonable amount of time. But they're basically problems with the amount of immunoglobulins that your body is producing. So it's sort of linked to the chronic infection, but because you don't have the ability to fight infections off, it could be playing whack-a-mole where you get rid of one and then another one pops up because your immune system isn't really staying on track with fighting off these infections. So this is something that can definitely be screened for and checked for in a blood test. The fifth immune cause of fatigue would be something like cancer. So cancers like leukemia, lymphoma, and really all types of cancers can cause fatigue due to the immune system's response to those cancers and the corresponding immune upregulation and the chemicals that are being produced to fight that cancer off. Now, once you throw you know, treatments in there and as the treatment progresses, uh, the, the reason for the fatigue can be lots of things going on with the person. So meaning other things can also be related to that fatigue independent of the immune system activity. So just like with anything, if you have ongoing fatigue going on, it's important to consult with your doctor, healthcare professional to determine the underlying cause, and then choose the appropriate treatment plan based on what that actual cause is. And like with many health conditions, the context is really important. Not all of these health conditions have a black and white test you can always test for. And so Sometimes you have to layer in the symptom picture and get a better understanding of the overall picture to make that diagnosis and appropriate treatment. At least I've found in my practice that taking the time to understand those symptoms and layer that in with the blood test is really helpful in narrowing down what the causes can be. So how'd I do? Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of some of the immune causes of fatigue. If you have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. Happy to answer your question. We'll see you next time.